Let's look at another situation for Mendelian genetics, and we're going to look at blood types in human beings. And this is, again, a multiple allele situation, and we're going to look at how to use some Punnett squares to check for which blood type is possible based on the parents. Uh, there are four blood types, A, B, O, and AB, and in this lesson we're not going to talk about the rhesus factor, which is the positive or negative aspect of blood types. So let's go ahead and look at first an overview of blood types, but then let's uh, look at how we would use Punnett squares to determine offspring possibilities. So there are four main blood types, A, B, O, and AB, and we do have a rhesus factor, which is the positive or negative factor, and we're not going to go into that rhesus factor for our purposes here for our Mendel Mendelian genetics. Uh, it would be valuable for you to know your own blood type if you were in an accident or had to go to the hospital and needed a transfusion of any kind. And it would also be good to know what blood type you are if you decided to donate blood, which is a very important uh, service opportunity you have to your community. So what blood type you have is determined by the antibodies and antigens that are in your blood. So if you have what is called group A blood, that means you have anti-B antibodies and you have pro-A antigens. So the antigens are recognizable here in the diagram of the red blood cell with the little purple circles around the cell itself. If you have B-type blood, you have antibodies that are anti-A, so you do not like A-type blood, and you have the B antigens surrounding the blood cell. If you have AB blood, uh, then you have both A and B antigens, and you don't have any antibodies, so you will not repel uh, A or B type blood. And then the last group is group O, and O blood has both A and B antibodies, and it has no antigens. So O blood is actually the most common type of blood in the population, and we're going to break that down in just a second. So to simplify some of those terms we just went over, antibodies are substances in the blood or in your body that reg recognize and counteract against substances that are alien or unfavorable to the blood. So an A antibody would repel B blood. Antigens are chemicals that induce a response in the body, primarily an immune response, to a substance that would be uh, negative for the blood. So we're not going to go into the full understanding of blood and antibodies and how they all work and antigens, but uh, this is a simplification of what those chemical substances are in your blood. So let's look at the population of blood types, and we're going to look at the population here in the United States. It is slightly different universally around the world, but in the United States, about 45% of the population has O-type blood, 40% of the population has A-type blood, 11% of the population has B-type blood, and then 4% of the population has AB blood. Now, I happen to have AB blood. Uh, it does not make me special. It does make me unique. And uh, it would be valuable because you need to know what blood type you have so you know how much blood is available in the population if you were to have a transfusion, if you were, say, in an auto accident and had to have a major surgery. So let's talk about how that breaks down. So if we look at this situation, um, O-type blood can be given to an O person. Uh, A-type blood can receive from an O and can also receive from another A. 
B type blood can receive from an O type person and also a B type person. A B type person would not want to receive blood from an A donor. An A type blood person would not receive from a B donor. And then if you're fortunate like Mr. Miller here, I'm an AB person so I can actually receive from all of the blood types O, A, B, or AB and I can only be given to another AB person. So in this case O type blood is called the universal donor because O type blood can be given to everyone. AB is the universal receiver because AB blood can receive blood from everyone. So now let's get into the genetics of blood typing and we're going to use alleles as we have in the past and in this situation it is a multiple allele situation so we're going to use subscripts and in this case we have dominant a and dominant B. So we use the letter I, that's just a universal used for blood typing. It always uses the letter I. And I with a superscript A is the allele for A type blood. A capital letter I with a superscript B is the allele for B type blood. But in this case, which we didn't see in the codominant or uh, incomplete dominance videos earlier, we also have a recessive and in this case O type blood is a recessive allele and we use the lowercase i telling you it is recessive. So A, B, A and B are codominant. That means when they are both present that's where you get the AB type blood because you have both antibodies. Now for the letter O, this is a recessive trait, which means if it's paired with an IA or an IB, it will be masked. And the only way you can get O type blood is if you have both recessive alleles in your genotype. So let's take a look at those genotypes now. So for the four blood types, we do have the various genotypes. Remembering that genotypes are the genetic combination of alleles that give you the outcome, which is called the phenotype. So for the phenotype A type blood, you have the genotypes capital I A, capital I A, that's homozygous, or heterozygous, capital I A, little i. For B type blood, you have capital I B, capital I B, or the heterozygous IB little i. The recessive is little i little i which will give you the phenotype O type blood and then you have IAIB which gives you the unique AB blood. So now let's look at how we can take a Punnett square and determine the possible outcomes for the offspring of two parents. So we have a husband who is homozygous for A-type blood. His wife is heterozygous for B-type blood. They're expecting their first child. And what are the probabilities of the child's blood type? So we begin by identifying the genotypes of both parents. So the homozygous A-type blood husband is IAIA. And the heterozygous B-type blood for the mother is IB little i. As we have before, we're going to segregate the alleles of the two parents. So the father goes on the top, IAIA, -I -A, above each column. The mother goes on the left, IB little i, on each row. And now we're ready to begin crossing the Punnett's. So let's take the father's allele and bring it down into the Punnett square with the mother's allele and we get an offspring that's AB. The father's allele and the mother's allele and we get another possibility of an offspring of IB. The father's allele and the mother's allele and we now have a heterozygous A offspring and 
the father's allele and the mother's allele, we now have another heterozygous offspring. So this gives us 50% of the offspring have a possibility of being A-type blood. We have a 0% chance of getting B-type blood. We have a 50% chance of getting AB blood and 0 chance of getting O blood. So what if we had two parents who were heterozygous for A-type blood and they're having a child? Could they have a child with O-type blood? So let's use a Punnett square to figure this out. So the first parent is going to be IA little i. The second parent is also IA little i, as both of them are heterozygous for their blood type. So we segregate the alleles, and we get IA on the first column, little i on the second column, IA on the first row, and little i on the second row. And now we complete the cross, and what we end up with is a IA, IA, so that's a homozygous A child, IA, little i, a heterozygous A child. We go IA, little i, another heterozygous A child, and we have little i, little i we have an O child. So in this case we have a 75 percent chance of having an A child, a zero chance of having a B child, zero chance of having an AB child, and a 25 percent chance of having an O child. So let's do one more example. In this case I'll use my own family. So Mr. Miller has an AB blood type, Mrs. Miller has O type blood, and their daughter Christina has B type blood. So we're going to try to figure out her genotype and we're going to complete the Punnett square to do this. So Mr. Miller's genotype is IAIB, Mrs. Miller's genotype is little i, little i. So when we segregate the alleles, Mr. Miller's allele goes on the top, IA on the first column, IB on the second column. Mrs. Miller's genotypes goes on the side, little i for the top row and little i for the bottom row. And now we're ready to complete the cross. So the IA comes down into the first box with the little i. So that's a heterozygous A child. The IB goes with the little i, and that would also be a heterozygous, but a B child. And IA little i would give us a heterozygous A child. And IB little i gives us a heterozygous B child. So based on this Punnett square crossing a B Mr. Miller with O Mrs. Miller, the only possibility for Christina having B type blood, Christina's genotype is IB little i. And just to look at this, would it be possible for Mr. and Mrs. Miller to have an O type child? Since none of the offspring possibilities from this Punnett square are little i, little i, even though Mrs. Miller has O type blood, because Mr. Miller cannot give away a little i, there is no possibility of an O-type child from our marriage. So that's it on Punnett squares and blood types, and we will continue with more blood types and Punnett squares when we look at pedigrees next week.